I'm going to tell you a story about Thomas Robert Malthus. Thomas Robert was born in the year of our Lord, 1766. His father was Daniel Malthus, a well-connected member of the English aristocracy. He was friends with members of the Scottish Enlightenment, like David Hume and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Being the youngest of six in an 18th century home, it was rare indeed that Thomas got to spend any time with his father and his notable friends. Thomas grew up in the Jane Austen world of provincial manners, private tutors, and horse-drawn carriages. He came of age as his father's friends were in the midst of their greatest accomplishments. Adam Smith had published The Wealth of Nations in 1776, and David Hume had established himself as a great economist. The world was changing. The world looked like revolution and smelled like enlightenment, but Thomas didn't trust it. All around him, Thomas was looking up to people that had made their mark on history. He was torn between wanting to make his own mark on history and cautious skepticism. Thomas would say, But father, why does everyone think the world is changing in a fundamental way? Don't you think they're being just a bit rash to get on the bandwagon of social change? I think that maybe some things were meant to stay the same, the way God intended them. Academic achievements came easy to Thomas. At 16, he entered Warrington Academy. By 18, he enrolled at Jesus College, Cambridge. By 25, Thomas Robert graduated with a master's and just two years later was named a fellow at his alma mater. Thomas first sought to make his mark as a demographer. He saw as wealth in society grew, people were having more and more children. This fact concerned Thomas. He saw that as population grew exponentially, agricultural output was growing linearly. This was a problem because eventually they'd reach a point where there wouldn't be enough food for the people. This would inevitably lead to famine and a decrease in population. The cycle is known as a Malthusian trap. Thomas would say, I do not know that any writer has supposed that on this earth, man will ultimately be able to live without food. Thomas believed that people should flee from excessive reproduction in order to keep population stable. But nobody listened to Thomas, and people continued to get freaky with one another. Even at the time, Thomas's essays inspired controversy. Thomas stuck by his guns. He released another half dozen essays responding to his critics, defending his original point. He incorporated new material and sought to persuade people that his way of thinking was the right way. <gasps> but Malthus was wrong. 200 years later, and we still haven't arrived at the Malthusian catastrophe that he predicted. So what went wrong? Thank you. There were several factors that Malthus did not predict. First was the innovations in agriculture. Malthus believed that agriculture could not keep up with the growth in population, but modern technology has allowed agriculture to increase its output exponentially while using less and less farmland. Second is his belief that increased prosperity would cause increased population. In fact, we have observed that the reverse is true. In the modern Western world, many of the countries with the most wealth are having fewer and fewer children. So much so that despite their affluence, their population is actually shrinking. Although big changes are rare in history, change is also an inevitable part of the human experience. Thomas had the misfortune of making his prediction right on the cusp of one of the most pivotal changes in human history, the Industrial Revolution. While Malthus's ideas may seem obsolete now, 
they reveal the human capability to persevere and adapt in the face of changing circumstances. This is the true heart of what Malthus sought to communicate in his writings. Thomas never achieved the fame and recognition that he strove for, yet it seems that he was content with the lot that fell to him. The epitaph at his grave at Bath Abbey reads, One of the best men and truest philosophers of any age or country. Raised by native dignity of mind above the misrepresentation of the ignorant and the neglect of the great, he lived a serene and happy life, devoted to the pursuit and communication of truth, supported by the calm but firm conviction of the usefulness of his labors, contented with the approbation of the wise and good.